Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting August 8, 2013 at 18.08 hours. Uh, Director Branch, will you lead us in the pledge of allegiance? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You. The records show that all board members are present. Are there any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda? I'm not, I'm not good. I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. The first uh, item that we want to deal with in the interest of our attorney's time is the uh, November 7, 2013, ballot measure and tape request. Would you like to walk us through what's required? Sure. Um, you have now um, three intergovernmental agreements, two for Jefferson County and one for Park County, um, that uh, we will need to have signed. Um, you also have a resolution. Um, maybe you do. Sorry, you will soon have a resolution. Um, we thought all of this had gotten over here, but somehow um, it didn't. Um, um, a resolution appointing a, a designated election official and stating that you want to go forward with these uh, intergovernmental agreements. We can have somebody from the district, um, um, Mike or whoever, sign it, or your dis uh, designated election official can do it. now. Initially, informally, we had said that, and actually I think you did take formal action, yeah, we did that, last month. that Rhonda would do it. So we can continue with that and just fill in her name on that resolution. Now I have a question about that. <clears throat> okay. Is she, isn't the county clerk a designated election official for coordinated elections? Yes, but you need a, a, representative. a representative. So it's not a DEO. It's not the same DEO, but they do refer to them still as a DEO. But it's you're exactly right. The, okay. the the true DEO for the coordinated election in each county is the clerk and recorder. Okay. And Rhonda is your uh, right. contact person, and that's what we did last time. And here she is actually, I think, um, signing as the designated election official. Which I I know it just seems kind of well weird. as long as it's squares with it, it, it we squares have to do. with the reality. Yeah. So. Um, and then um, um, uh, these agreements basically put forward that um, um, we are, and we have until the 26th to get these in along with our question, our ballot question. So we actually have a little bit of time if you guys can't come up with a ballot question tonight. And I, I know that's the goal, but, but I mean, this is a big step that you all are going to push forward and then ask the taxpayers to um, uh, vote on an increase to taxes and I know you've got, um, um, you, you're taking the step with caution and we should. So um, if it can't be done tonight, uh, we do have time for a special meeting, but whether you need one or not. I, trust me, I've got another district that's doing one of these and they already said, Richard, we're not getting it done at our regular meeting. We're going to have to have a special. They just can't, they just can't get their act together that quickly. So uh, I just wanted you to know that is an option. So, okay, Marie's passing out the um, this resolution number 8 slash 13 dash 1. And, um, um, and Alex, you will see at paragraph 3 that. Um, that they do, and this is their form, by the way, uh, they do designate this as the uh, designated election official, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but that is um, <coughs> what we're doing. So to go forward and make the next step before we even get into which question, um, um, we need to make sure that, you know, these intergovernmental agreements, and it's basically just saying you're going to pay your share, you will provide them with the information they require, and that you will uh, get your Tabor question approved by the Secretary of State's office on your own before you um, even uh, uh, get, get them working on it because uh, that's part of the district's role. The county does not want to take everybody's Tabor question and try and justify it to the Secretary of State. So that's what Rhonda and I are working on currently. So, but, so this 
if we agree to a Tabor question tonight, that goes to the state, mm -hmm. Secretary of State, mm -hmm. for approval in form. Mm -hmm. Comes back to us. No, it goes as long as it's okay. It goes back to Rhonda, and we give it right to the to, to, the, to the county. county. Okay. The two counties. Yeah. Two we counties. did make that motion last month. To yep. point on this. Okay. okay. All right. So I will fill in Rhonda on, on this over the one that we signed. <coughs> we'll be doing Rhonda Davis. So. Um, and th so that's the paperwork side of this thing. Then the, the meat and potatoes part of this is the uh, Tabor questions. And um, um, the, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a number of them that you guys have wanted to do. Um, and we can go through, um, kind of go through them. One is the Tabor question with a six year reduction. So after six years, which is the approximate time that uh, we calculated on a lease purchase that those uh, trucks, the two fire tankers and one fire engine, would be paid off. And so that step down from 2.5 mils to, <coughs> point, I, I mean, by 0.9 to 1.6 mils uh, would take place in six years. Um, that's pretty aggressive financing and, and things would have to follow pretty good, but that's that's why, you know, what was kind of the most aggressive we could go, and that would be a six-year step down on that. The next one, which is a little bit uh, more reasonable, is the table question <coughs> allowing the 2.5 mils and then an eight-year step down uh, for the, um, from 2.5 to 1.6, so 0.9. That um, gives you a little bit more flexibility on your financing. Um, to get those uh, three trucks taken care of. The 1.6 stays in perpetuity for a um, uh, for maintenance and just general operations uh, of the fire protection services, not necessarily related to those three trucks, but just to the whole district. <clears throat> the next one is a table question. It's 2.5 and has no um, uh, step down at all, so there's no reduction, um, and it just goes on in perpetuity. Um, the next one is that um, uh, the point nine takes place with the lease payoff, but I don't think that can really be written that way. I, I told you last time I was going to look at that, I looked at it, I, I don't think this is a, a reasonable question. I really like to pull this one off the table. Uh, to you. That. Yeah, I just don't think we can do it because it, it, it assumes something we don't have, which is lease purchase. And, okay. and so we're asking uh, the voters to suspend reality, if you will, and, and also assume that we have a lease purchase. And I just don't think I can write that under the Taylor Amendment without facing a challenge on it. And, you know, then what do we got? So we've held an election, maybe passed an election, and it's called out. So I, I'd really like to pull that one off the table. <clears throat> and then the final one um, is a Tabor question with a 10-year expiration. This is what the chief, um, and uh, Greg, I don't know how much of that you could hear, but we were trying passing the phone back and forth. And, uh, I heard plenty. Okay. Um, this is the chief's recommendation from the last time. I don't know if recommendation is the right word, but it was a suggestion by the chief that after 10 years, the uh, 2.5 mils go ahead and, um, and just... That expire and and what that would require is if it's necessary and, and prudent to keep it going that you would go back to the taxpayers and ten years from now and ask them for it um, um, and uh, for an extension and um, you know Bill felt like that um, it was fair the taxpayers are staying you know, engaged with this and um, and yet ten years gives you enough time. Uh, to um, you know, do some planning. You know, it's a couple of five-year planning cycles was kind of, I think, his thinking on why the <coughs> ten years. Um, and since he's not here to defend it, I thought I'd you know try and give you my understanding of what he and I have discussed over the phone. And well, stuff. and when he knew he wasn't going to be back from his wildland deployment, uh, he shared a lot of that with me. Oh, good. So All right. Well, you can you I, can fill in the blanks. 
Um, so, um, as a you know, long-term um, person with you know, former firefighter with this district, and also um, having had many connections with this district for a long time, um, I'll tell you what I would like to see you do, but I'm not sure it's it's the most prudent or what you want to do. But um, you know, in all those 35 years, I mean, I joined in 1978. Um, uh, there's never been a mill levy increase. In fact, there's been some ratcheting down before we debruised after Tabor went in the 1990s. So, um, you know, I to keep this district uh, current and. Um, as flexible as possible and as strong as possible, I would think that the um, just asking plan out and the 2.5 increase. I mean, you know, if you don't need it, sure you can you're always re um, on an annual basis. You can choose not to um, collect part of that money. Um, and when uh, mill levies were high. I don't know if you know any tax bills, but a lot of uh, districts were doing that, where they were doing temporary tax relief in that way. You know, so um, you don't have you're not a water district or a rec district where you can collect fees of any kind. You only have really this revenue stream for you and any grants that you get. So I, I don't know. I mean, that's why you're you're the elected officials of the public, and you need to make those those determinations. But what I'd like to see is they get. Um, uh, the district a little bit financially stronger, so the kind of cutbacks that you've had to suffer in this downturn wouldn't have to be faced <coughs> on the next economic downturn, you know, and that's that's what I see. I mean, you've landed on your feet and it seems like things are going well enough, all things considered, but it just, it's pretty tight right now. You've got rid of a lot of people and um, you've had to cut back on some service stuff, so um, you know, I think that 2.5 forever is probably the appropriate thing, but whether or not it's a politically correct thing is up to you. So, yeah. that's that's where I'm at. So, does that answer your, as in general terms, what we're doing and what the choices are? And and and, and by the way, we got time. I mean, if you want to uh, futz with one tonight, we can change one around, and it won't be, and then and then approve that tonight, and then I'll get it all to you on your emails tomorrow morning. But, so, I mean, you're not locked in um, on any of these five pieces of paper. Um, it's just, uh, um, or four if we withdraw that one. So, um, however you want to do it. And just for the board's information, all that's required is if the directors are comfortable with one of these, just requires a motion to be passed tonight. That right. part is and, then, and I need that um, resolution uh, passed tonight, too, okay. that she has passed out. So it's a Those vote. It's a vote I'm of accepting a question and a vote of entering into the resolution. Two separate motions. Two separate motions. Okay. Um, on that note, then uh, I'd like I want to hear from the directors that are on the level of service committee. Uh, after hearing from the chief, uh, not that it couldn't be justified to continue this mill uh, always and still be one of the have one of the lowest fire mills in the entire state. Um, I think the chief's concern was from talking with voters and going out uh, with the citizens is everyone seems to understand that we have a real low mill here for the great service that we get in this district. Uh, the downturn has really affected us. Uh, he's uh, running this department so lean now that something's got to be done. Um, minus, uh, as you say, another downturn. I think what he's run into from talking to voters is a lot of voters want to know what the problem is, that's pretty clearly identified here, what it's going to cost them, uh, what they're going to get for it, and when and if it's going to end. Uh, he runs into a lot of the no blank checks for government type of a, of a scenario. So uh, we're in such dire needs for, for revenue that I think he feels that this has the greatest chance of success uh, for voters to know what the problem is, what little it's going to cost them, especially compared to their fire insurance going up, if they can get it. And then secondly, that it is going to end at some point. Um, having the same concern as the attorney about where are we in 10 years, uh, as you stated, at least now this board and this chief have put together some long-term planning. 
Um, so getting through some long-range planning and hoping there's not another downturn. But at least in 10 years, it's a little easier to show the taxpayers what they got for their money and this level of service continue, continue if you keep it. So you're not asking for an increase, you're just asking for status quo at that time. So I understand that train of thought and I believe that's why he feels that this would be the option he would recommend. Having said that, speaking for him and a little bit of my own opinion, I would like to ask the two directors first that are on level service for their opinion or suggestion. Greg? I, I concur with uh, the Chief's recommendation. I will say that um, uh, you know there now is an outstanding group put together, one representative right there, which is Neil, um, of uh, citizens, of uh, board members, uh, concerned uh, community folks, um, I think very, very highly focused on the right, uh, uh, the right pieces to very, very candidly, uh, you know, honestly take the uh, issues forward. I feel <coughs> very, very comfortable with uh, what we're doing, and uh, you will see uh, more details very shortly. That said, I did miss the, the very last meeting, which was uh, uh, one to more tightly decide uh, exactly how we were going to do it, and Alec can talk a little bit more about that, but I think it's a great bunch of folks all working in a very uh, candid, common way, and um, I, I think it's uh, uh, looking forward to being uh, continue to be part of this. And and um, you know, I think the vast majority of uh, that group actually would be in favor of this as well. So uh, I'll leave it at that for now, and I'll comment more if, uh, if I need to with what Alec would have to say. Okay, Alec. Well, most of our discussions. Uh, Committee, level of service committee has been uh, what is our level of service what impact does it have on things like insurance rates and um, ISO qualifications and so forth um, what is the uh, uh, impact of the fact that from time to time uh, actually frequently we have multiple calls at once and we need to have a certain amount of capability to handle those um, the bottom line, as I understood it, was that the committee feels that the current level of service needs to be maintained. Uh, ideally, uh, some have thought, well, maybe we ought to increase it by opening up a fifth station um, where we have some property. But I think for now, uh, the essential point is to maintain our service. We cannot maintain our service at the current funding level. Uh, we have some short-term needs, and when I say short-term, I mean uh, we'd like to get the equipment that we need as soon as possible. Uh, and I think that's where we came up with, <coughs> originally the, the suggestion was that we have sort of two different kinds of levies. We have a general one, and then we have one that would either issue a bond or uh, finance uh, the equipment some other way. But I think that uh, in discussions that uh, the chief has participated in this committee, um, his idea is to, by use of long-range planning, financial planning, establishing a capital account, establishing a, a uh, system for replacing um, fire apparatus as needed, uh, including the uh, elimination of some of the apparatus we have or some of the trucks that we have that we really don't need. Um, I think that this uh, two and a half mil for 10 year idea is a good idea. Um, do you like to comment on this yet? Or? Well, this is the first time that I can recall that when the subject of no levy increase has arisen, that I have heard not one negative comment about a no levy increase. I think the entire community, or at least the, you know, this is anecdotal, obviously, but I think that of the people I have spoken with, there's almost well, complete and universal acceptance of the notion that it's going it's a pay me now or pay me later situation. Either we fund the department so that we can maintain a certain level of service, or <coughs> pay your insurance company if you can get insurance co insurance to increase the amount or to keep the amount of insurance you already have. So, uh, I, and I'm personally in favor of. A, a no levy increase that has the uh, realistic probability of sunsetting in 10 years. I, and so I, I'm 
I would be in favor of this. I think the, um, I'm very proud of the, the members of the Elk Creek Fire District. I think they're giving excellent service. <clears throat> it's very obvious in the last few meetings with the chief going over the finances of the district that we are as lean as possible. Um, as far as my discussions with citizens, they certainly want the same level of service. Thank God for the rain that we've had this summer. Uh, if you look at the past two seasons, it's very obvious between that and 285 and the accidents that we're always dealing with that we really need the, uh, the, the equipment, we need the personnel to be, um, <clears throat> to be compensated in such a way that they can continue giving that high level of service in order to continue. I really feel that we need to um, go with the mill levy, levy increase, and I don't think it should be a blank check. I think I agree with, uh, with a reasonable 10-year expiration time. So I would, uh, if, if, if I may, I'd like to make a motion to adopt number five, the taper question with 10-year expiration. I would second that motion. Okay, that motion's been made and second. Is there any further discussion? See no discussion. All those in favor of the motion to adopt Recommendation number five, the Tabor question with a 10-year expiration. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passed unanimously. Therefore, with this will also require a motion to adopt resolution number 8-13-1. So moved. Is there a second on that? Second. All those in favor of that resolution? Aye. Aye. It also passes unanimously. If I can get you to sign this one, I'm going to be playing by the time. These IGAs. Then uh, Rondo will sign this. Oh, okay. So I don't do anything. No, you don't need to do Everybody's got a copy, but just so you know what the next steps are. Marie has. Um, uh, copies of some other things. Uh, for instance, we have to this year new election rule. You know, have to give them a map of your district if anything has changed in the last 12 months. Well, we haven't had any inclusions or exclusions, so we're okay there. But it's just, um, it's just a lot of things like that that you know we're just going to hit hit the uh, uh, various holes and get the right round pegs and square pegs in all the you know, various places. Okay, and when are we able to release this language as what we've adopted publicly? Um, or do you have to... No, no, I think uh, uh, probably just... Uh, uh, let so me we fly. need the Secretary of State to... If that would probably be, that's what I was going to say, let me fly spec and maybe try and get okay. it. And then as soon as we get that, we'll then, of course, we'll want it out as quickly right, as we right. can. So, okay. you know, so let's see if we get approval on it and otherwise get it right back to you. Okay. With any changes that they make. Okay. okay. Um, okay, any other discussion on the table or the ballot measure? Okay, you're free to stop turning this. Okay. <laughs> that sounds reasonable to me since I have to get you on. I do need uh, uh, a couple more autographs. Uh, Len right there, if you want. And, um, Because uh, it's my notary book, because I just don't register. Oh, okay. Where do you want to hear it? Perfect. Oh, you were signing a check for him? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw oh, didn't that. I tell you what this was? Yes. Press, press, press check. check what, yeah, what's that press through? <laughs> there you go. Know, uh, yeah, I have nothing else other than, okay. um, as I'd mentioned, that um, there is still, the litigation is still going forward uh, between. Um, uh, former counsel, uh, Mr. Cole, and former Chief Dolan. Um, that's what those affidavits have to do with. Uh, we are not named, we're outside of that, and so other than that some of you board members were involved and they need factual information from time to time, um, the district is um, staying out of it. The insurance company closed their file on, um, on our involvement because of the ruling from the Trinity hearing back in um, February. So, um, it's, it, whatever's happening, I know very little and
care that we'll know what you're saying. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right, and I'll be here next month. Is, is that a pension board meeting? Mm -hmm. no. no. No, that's October. Yeah. Okay. October. So if not next month, I'll be here October for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next item, get back in order, uh, review the July 13th, 2013 regular meeting minutes. Continue packet for all of the yeah. table questions. Oh, it is? Yeah. Table questions are on top. Yeah, just stuck through the rest of this. Okay. It should be the first thing. Yep. Yes. Wasn't one meeting. Good. Yes. I was on the Oregon coast. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a motion to approve those minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That passes. That'll take us to the financial matters. Alec. Uh, first, I'll get this out of the way. I'd like a motion. Uh, make a motion that we approve. Uh, $122,801 as cash expenses for the month of July. Is there a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. Uh, you may notice if you look at the attached financial reports that the expenditures uh, show us like a higher figure. The difference is that we expense out uncollectible accounts. Um, so in the next page after the, 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 summary, the summaries of the next page after the financial report, uh, it says uh, under expenses, the first line item is uncollectible accounts. That's not a cash uh, disbursement, but it is an expense. So the numbers uh, at the bottom for total expenses won't necessarily match this cash out. So we approve the cash expenses, and in subsequent months, I think we're going to lump them all together. Is that right? Yeah, so we're going to have the, the total expenses there. Uh, you'll also notice that we do have this new, uh, the new scheme, chart of accounts and accounting system is uh, finally underway, right? And uh, so this is a, a hopefully a more um, better organized way of uh, figuring out just where our revenue comes and what we spend our money on. And uh, you can look at it if you have any questions. You can ask for me. <laughs> uh, the other thing is you have the audit report in front of you, um, financial statements that uh, was submitted to the state as we authorized at the last meeting. The audit is complete, and you have it in front. Of you. That's it. That's all I have. Any questions from the board on the audit or the financial statement? Questions on financial matters at all? Okay, as far as the fire chief report, uh, Chief McLaughlin was on a wildland deployment, was unable to get back in time. Uh, Captain Ware was put in charge of the department. Uh, his wife, I believe, just had the baby sometime this afternoon, so he's not here. Uh, his backup, uh, Chief Eigel, uh, wife got called away on work. He's not here, so thank God for Scott Aaron. Greetings, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> Uh, so unfortunately, we don't actually have a formal fire chief's report, but uh, Scott's here in case if he can maybe answer a question for any board member, and then the chief will follow up with a full report next month. Okay. Any questions for Scott? Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Happy to be number four. <laughs> we look good. You know. That's right. That's right. All right. Is there any old business from the board? Okay. How about any new business? <clears throat> okay. How about any citizens issues tonight? Okay. How about adjourn and go watch the Bronco game? Like that? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. So second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All her. Yeah. <laughs> you just need one name on that. Take your pick. We'll add your vote to 1838. <laughs>
All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right.